Hi everybody, it's Cash. Welcome back. Thank you very much for joining me today. I'm going to have to really get a move on because Christmas week is running away with me and I'm really short of time. But I have done pictures for Don Jr. again. I'm so curious why he's still out there. Why is he not in jail or prosecuted or something? So I took a look at him, plus China and its ever worsening COVID crisis, plus the UK economy in 2023, plus the National Health Service and the Canadian Health Service, plus a whole bunch more. It's the end of the year. Obviously, I don't plan to get sentimental about this, but I am grateful to everybody who has contributed to this channel in 2022, whether it's with donations or comments or advice or criticism. It's all really made this a much better channel. The comments have been astonishing, by the way. Last time, do you remember those pictures for Ukraine and Russia? That got a lot of people quite angry, unfortunately. But remember the pictures where there were those dragons up in the clouds spitting fire at the earth. Those were apparently, according to the pictures, Ukrainian dragons. Somebody wrote and said, do you know that the American-made dragon missile defense system is being used by Ukraine? If that is true, that is amazing. Dragon missiles, who knew? Thank you very much indeed for letting me know. And also for all your advice about milk and what kind of milk I can have because I am not allowed to have dairy. I'm sort of allergic to dairy. However, I did do testing on two kinds of milk that you suggested. One was goat's milk and the other one was a lactose free milk. And I had a bit more success with those. Here's what happened when I tried them. It is tea testing time again. We've already proved that uh, the black tea, which I have in two glasses here, um, basically this is fine for my body. It tests positively in both cases. There we go. Positive muscle test in both cases. It's the milk that is the problem. When I add regular dairy milk to tea, it goes horribly wrong for me. And I also get uh, pains in my abdomen. So you suggested that I try others. I'm actually allergic to grains and nuts. So I can't have oat milk or cashew milk or that sort of thing. But what I do have here in two other glasses, I have goat's milk and I have a lactose free um, dairy milk, but with added nutrients, because I guess they think, well, if we're taking the lactose out, what are they paying for, really? <gasps> Let's give them nutrients. And so this has nutrients in it, right? So I've got to keep these in order. <laughs> it's a bit like find the lady. Uh, where is it? Where's the one? Uh, but I, I'm, first of all, I'm going to try out the uh, goat's milk. I'll muscle test it first. Here you go. This is the goat's milk one. Let's muscle test it. Oh, oh, oh nice. That gets a very positive yes. And then uh, I'll also try this one out since I'm here. Um, this is the lactose free one on the right. Try that one out. Oh, oh, look at that. That works too. We're on a winner here, right? So um, what I'm gonna do now is take the goat's milk and pour it into the tea. There we go. And, um, and try that. Yeah, very goaty. <laughs> but um, let's just do pictures for that as well while we're at it. See what happens. You see, this has in the pictures a column of white coming out of it. The original tea had a sort of murky, misty nothingness to it, really. This has a this has a column, a white column in the middle coming out of it, suggesting that. Face it, it's hot, it's good, it's okay. Whereas around the outside, it is um, maybe not so good. Maybe milk isn't a good thing to put in the body, but this one is actually not bad. And now with the lactose free, let's try that with a different finger. Ow, that has a sort of mist over it. Not in it, but over it like a, almost like a, a cappuccino foam, um, but they're very separate. Like two different entities that you're trying to mix in the same glass, 
but which don't mix. They don't go together. Two different energies. So they're both okay in their own right, but mixed together, they don't really go together? Something like that? Goat, I guess, mostly okay. Quite strongly okay. I just don't like the taste of it very much. And uh, I have eaten goat, and I didn't like the taste of goat when I ate it either. Um, and then there's this one, which seems to be fine, except that the pictures say it doesn't mix with the tea. So that was incredibly helpful, and I've been using lactose-free ever since. We'll see if there are any repercussions from it. Oh, and thank you to everybody who wrote in with topics for forecasts for 2023. This is the list of things. It's already got stains on it, so you know I've been studying it. But thank you. I will get to them over the coming weeks. Uh, beginning, I think, today with the UK economy. And the reason I'm starting there is because the pictures when I did them very much mirror the pictures I did for the US economy in a strange way. Do you remember the US economy pictures from last time? Many of you thought this was America general in 2023, but this was the US economy only. And people were going around in that little tunnel thing, complaining and whining about how bad things were. And yes, there was something to complain about, but eventually they came out the other side and the road ahead seemed pretty clear. Halfway down the road, though, there was a huge freeway, as if there was a chance here for America to make a fresh start. Now, in the UK pictures, when I went into the energy for those, there were a bunch of very large, wet brushes like you get in a car wash. And Britain, the little figure, was having to wander in between these brushes. It was getting a pummeling, you know, they're like little uh, straps and they just were beating this person. And it got to a point where it was simply thrashed. It was purged. The worst was over, but only because Britain had really faced up to what the problems were. And now it was ready to move forward. Directly ahead was a wall. And if Britain, the economy, moved above the wall, it could walk across it and things would be so much better. There was a straightforward solution to Britain's problems. It just had to be prepared to be enlightened about how it went about things, to lift itself up to a new level. And yet, typical of Britain, it decided that it would be easier to move the wall, the block of concrete that was ahead of it just to push it forward. Yeah, we can do this. We can make this work. It was effort. It was struggle. It was unnecessary expenditure of energy. Such an exercise in futility. Why are you doing that? Lift your sights. Raise yourself up. Do the right thing and walk along the top of it where it was white and open and filled with optimism. That's all that had to happen. But for some reason, British politicians could not do that initially. That would just take too much effort. Let's push the concrete ahead of us instead. And the concrete would barely move because concrete doesn't. It's such a blinkered view of the world. And it was the same with America. There was the higher level. That's where the prosperity lay, or the path to prosperity. But if you're going to stay down below and not allow yourself to rise up to it, some people said, where's the on-ramp to the freeway? There was no on-ramp. It was about allowing the country to be lifted up rather than hanging on to the old ways surrendering to the new instead of clinging on to the old that hasn't worked, that has left so many people poor. And uh, the same situation applied in the UK as in the US, broadly speaking. But while I was doing the UK, I also looked at the National Health Service, which is always teetering on the edge of collapse. 
It's been around since 1948. Obviously, it's taxpayer funded and many, many people rely on it. I think a million people a day use the National Health Service. And over the years, politicians have abused it horribly. They're always talking about how important the National Health Service is, how vital it is to keeping the economy going and keeping people going. Then the first opportunity they get, they compromise it in some way. They cut back the staff. They cut back the money. They don't give it what it needs to function. Right now, nursing staff are holding strikes. So I thought I would take a look at the NHS over the next year. And it was represented by a very large cube. And this cube was running along on tiny little casters, tiny little wheels that could barely support it. It was okay as long as everything stayed the same. But if there was any kind of stress put on it or any kind of instability, the whole structure stood a chance of coming off its wheels. There was an archway, which I assumed to be a portal into next year. That's where it's got to go. But on the other side of this archway, the path was thinner than the cube, which meant that the casters, well, if they wandered this way half an inch, if they wandered that way half an inch, the whole structure could come falling down. And as it went across this, it was like a bridge, I suppose, it was crumbling. It was like... And cracks were starting to appear in the very support structure upon which the cube depended. The pathway led into a very dark tunnel. Uh-oh. Basically, sad clown face. Because if the cube was allowed to go into that tunnel, things would get very bad indeed. There was a path down. Somebody said at some point, I guess, hey, we're heading for disaster. We need to do something to avert it. So there was a path down. It's like, okay, compromise. We'll do this. We'll do that. It'll be all right. Same thing as always. As the cube went down this little path, precariously, there was a conveyor at the bottom. And I think maybe there's a fuss over what happens with the NHS, or maybe people don't like the compromise so much that they have to take drastic action. Because somebody came along, this may actually be beyond 2023, but uh, in the next few months, somebody came along and said, we have got to rescue this thing. The NHS is a pillar of our society. We've got to rescue it. And the cube went on the conveyor and gradually started to rise. But as with so many things in Britain, it had to be staring into the face of catastrophe before something was done. The same thing applied to the Canadian healthcare system. People asked me to look at that. That is teetering as well, apparently. With longer wait times, it's harder to get treated and so on. And when I went into the energy of that, there it is, the little figure walking along its path. To its right, there was a much higher path that represented where the Canadian healthcare system should be. But underneath it was so much turmoil, so much confusion, or, I don't know, red tape. It should be up there. That's the ideal situation for it, to give the best service to the people. But it was stuck down here on a much thinner path. Now, looking way ahead, way ahead, the two paths might ultimately converge. Canadians might get the healthcare system they deserve. Maybe it is a fusion of uh, public and private or something. But way down the line, the two paths seemed to come together. In the meantime, there was a little offshoot path. And this little offshoot path went up to the main path. It suggested that somebody may come along with ideas. 
ways to put the Canadian healthcare service back on track. Come on, guys, it's time. Look at the mess we're in. Let's do this, A, B, C, D, and E. And they talk, and there is debate. My feeling was that that path would be seen for the potential it offered, but that opportunity probably wouldn't be taken. The little figure would carry on walking, and wee, wee, wee down the line, the two levels would gradually come together. Oh, and since we're talking about healthcare, many of you said, what about China and the COVID crisis? They are having a massive problem right now. They've opened their borders, I think. Said, come on in. But why? They're having a massive resurgence in COVID there. And it's very, very worrying. Now, if you remember, I did pictures for China and COVID quite a time ago. And there was a U-shaped valley and all these people were in the valley and they could see this storm cloud heading their way. And it went over them and some people lay on the floor in the pictures and it looked like they died. And there was chaos and people were blown off their feet. That, I assume, is what China is going through now. Eventually, it passed on by. And a few people were left going... God, what was that? So I took another look at COVID and China, put the two together in a picture, and immediately what I saw was a tree. And it had a flat top like you see in Africa. But instead of leaves, at the end of the branches, there were dark pods of some kind. I'm guessing this represents the healthcare crisis or COVID or something, but it was really serious. The whole tree at the top was covered with these pods. Eventually, though, the tree couldn't sustain the pods. They were just too heavy, and it bent over, as if it was made of rubber. It bent over, and the pods fell out on the ground and started melting the ground as if it was acidic. Which suggests to me that China was really hoping for the best. Let's just not ignore it, but let's just contain it, do what we can, try to get the country back to normal so we don't lose even more money, and pray, basically. Just wish and pray and do what we can. But the whole thing, behind closed doors, whatever it was, became too top-heavy, and now they've got a resurgence. It didn't look good at all in the short term, and I think will probably affect China into the new year, certainly until the spring, perhaps. But what was also interesting was that I thought, well, how is this going to go? How will it affect China long term? And all I saw was a tabletop with a tablecloth on it, but there was a hole in the middle of the table through which the cloth was gradually being pulled. So maybe that's COVID disappearing gradually, but it did seem along the way to sow a certain amount of distrust in China among the people about the competence of their government and whether the government really has their best interests at heart. And finally, I took a look at Donald Trump Jr. and how his life might go in 2023. Some of you said, would I do Jack Smith versus Donald Trump in 2023? Well, I've sort of done those pictures. If you want to go back through the videos, you'll see them. It's those where he, this is Jack Smith, put wires, like trip wires, across a little gully and said, now, Mr. Trump, if you'd like to walk this way, please. And Trump knew he was going to trip up on one of these wires. Those pictures will go on and on into 2023. As for Don Jr., the last time I looked at him, I'm not sure why this was, but he was on the ground and he was dragging himself like a dehydrated man in the desert across the ground. And directly ahead, there was a mound of broken glass, shards of glass that if he crawled across them, this was earlier in 2022, if he crawled across them, they would tear his flesh to shreds. And he knew this. This was the danger he faced 
at the beginning of 2022. He knew he had to go around. And so he dragged himself along the side of this hill, ridge, whatever it was, to an archway into the next phase of his life. And this brought him out of shadow, which he'd been in for a while, into sunlight. Now, he must feel that all is well. He must feel that he can escape all responsibility and seems incredibly confident that he's going to get away with whatever he has done. And this is frustrating to people. And in the pictures that I did way back, it did seem like he emerged into sunlight and he was going to be fine once he'd gone through this period of shadow. So I thought I'll take a quick look at his pictures again, because things can change, as we know. Nothing stays the same. The pictures are the same. So I took a look again at Don Jr. There he is. And when I went into his energy, he was being pulled along the ground with a wire attached to his ankles. Usually what that kind of thing means is that somebody's life, the pace of it, the rules of it, are not their own. They are at the mercy of outside forces, whoever is pulling the wire, basically. And he was being yanked along the ground. He was clutching at stones, at gravel, at the soil, anything to resist what was happening. It almost felt inevitable. The wheel was turning. He was being reeled in. Ah, no! As he was dragged along the ground. But it was still on the flat. Life may have been running away with him, but it's still on the flat. He should be okay. But as I looked ahead, the bad times hadn't really begun for Don Jr., as far as I can tell, because within a period of weeks, probably, the road he was on, the path, got very up and downy. Very roller coaster. It's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. And he would just bang himself on the hills, the peaks of the hills, as he went by, bouncing along. It would be all he could do not to freak out at what was happening to him. Because it's one thing being dragged along a flat surface. It's another entirely if you're being dragged over peaks and valleys and bam, 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 bam. And at one point, it looked like the wire dragged him off the end of a cliff, a very, very steep drop. Uh, It might actually be that the wire saves him in the end. Maybe there's a deal or something like that. But he was pulled off the cliff and that's where things seem to get very, very precarious for Don Jr., I still wonder, even now, whether, despite all this chaos and commotion and stuff being out of control, whether he is really held accountable, ultimately. One would like to think so. But it might very well be that investigators get Donald Trump Sr. and class that as THE win with a capital W. And the people along the way who maybe gave information or helped with something else or whatever, the people along the way escape the same kind of punishment that Donald Trump seems to be facing. It could be that. Or he may go down. I don't know. But certainly the really rough times of real uncertainty, of real danger of indictment, of real problems that could turn his life upside down those days hadn't really started yet they must be in the new year it will be very interesting to see Alrighty, that's it thank you very much for watching happy new year by the way i hope 2023 is a fabulous year for all of you you've certainly earned it and uh, if you want to subscribe to the channel please do i'm going to be making changes to the channel in the new year to the way the videos are delivered so uh, you might want to subscribe now for those um also like share if you would that'd be great for the channel Uh, follow me on twitter perhaps I don't hold out uh, much hope for Twitter, but uh, follow me at Cash Peters. Follow Olive at Olive Meets World. She's been behaving very strangely these past few days. I couldn't figure out why. She just seems to sleep all the time. 
Then I realised, of course, that she has a new companion now, one she fights with through the uh, window of the door at night, and she's up all night defending the house against that thing, <laughs> which looks so cute. But uh, clearly, she doesn't want it in the house, and she doesn't want me to uh, take it in, and uh, she's doing everything she can to frighten it away. And so she spends all night doing that, and all day she sleeps to recuperate. So that's what's going on. Olive is fine. She's just defending me and the house. How cute. <laughs> Alrighty, so as I said, have a wonderful new year, and I will see you next time. Thanks a lot, guys. Bye-bye.